Alrighty, now let's have a look at the second section, a little bit shorter this one, and this is a clean solo, kind of a prelude to all the overdriven antics that are about to come up a little later. So to start off here, we're largely based around the, everyone's favourite blues box at the 12th fret. And we're going to meet lots of this note, where 14th on the G, sliding up a fret. That's about it really, let's see what order Steve chooses to put these notes together. Um, first bar would be... Um, So what we're doing there is um, picking the A string at the 12th fret and hammering on at the 14th. And now on the D string, 12 and 14, quickly visit the G string at the 12th fret and back to the D at the 14th. So three, four. And now a bend here, 15th fret on the B string, upper tone. Repick it and let it down quickly. And now just all the way down the blues scale, as far as the 14th fret on the D. And now the next bar starts with um, this note here. You could hammer it, but I think on the record he's sliding. And give it a nice long wobble while you're up there. And now for the part that you can scarcely hear on the record. If it's possible to play notes in brackets or under your breath, that's what he's doing here. So what you do here, let that note ring for a while and then slide down there, hammer on at the 14th, bend up a bit, just one fret, down again, pull off, and now hammer on 14th fret on the D string and pull off. So you get um, as fast as you can, but also not drawing too much attention to those notes. Um, so that, that pair of bars again would be... All right, next bar. All right, so what we're doing there, we're filling in the gaps in between the so-called correct notes in the blues scale, so. That's 12, 13, 14, and 12 again. Note that for the first note here, there's a little rake going on, so you just drag the pick across the lower strings, muting, possibly with your picking hand, possibly with that in conjunction with some fingers on your fretting hand. Um, so if you slow that right down, you only actually hear this as a proper note. All right, so after that, that section there, it's a 14 and 12 on the D string. And now this little unit here, you pre-bend from the 14th fret on the G string. You pre-bend up a semitone, pick it, let it down and pull off to the 12. So now there's a 14th note, sorry, 14th fret on the D string. And back to that 12, 13, 14 combo on the G string. And you end that little phrase on a 12th fret on the D string. And finally, so that one there, you slide up to the 15th fret on the B, cut it off, and then down these three. 12 on the B, 14 on the G, 12 on the G. All right, so next bar. So for that, it's a first finger bar across the D, G and B strings. And trying to get something of a rake effect there, dragging the pick across the strings. And now you pick 14th on the A, slide down a whole tone and then pick the 10th fret on the A string. Um, okay, to round this bar off, you then go back to the 12th fret on the A string, but this time it's your third finger. Give it a nice convincing wobble. It's quite a wide vibrato here on the record. And then 10th on the A, 12 on the low E, and then 10, 11, 12 on the A again. Ending with another chordal stab, this time, that's uh, barring here at the seventh fret on the three high strings. And using your third finger to fret the ninth fret on the D string. So that pair of bars again, 
three and four and. Okay, the next phrase. So what we're doing here on beat two is uh, bending this up, 15th fret on the B string, bend up a tone and then hold it there. Pick it three times, cutting it off. And the key there is to bring your pick back onto the string before you need to pick the next note. So you get three short ones and then one with a bit more vibrato, a bit more sustained. Uh, and then finally let it down. So the next bar would start with pull off to the 12th fret on the B and then 14th fret on the G string, repick it, slide up a fret, told you that note would crop up, and now back there to the 14th. So that pair of bars would sound like three and four and... And now for a quirky little fill. Um, um, I think your best bet here is to uh, hold down this chord shape. So you're barring the middle two, thing, sorry, the middle two strings with your index finger and the top two strings with your little finger giving you that. And now what you do is pick the top E, the G, and then the B. And at this point, your third finger creeps in, uh, manages to get to the 14th fret and pre-bend it up a tone before you get to pick it. So that whole unit would sound like. It's almost a country lick. Um, to round that off, you then go 15th on the B, 12th on the D, and then the middle two barred at the 12th fret. And to round it off, this slide, um, technically from the 9th fret, but I don't think it matters too much, so long as you land on the 7th fret. And then that bar there, shake it a little bit. And to greet that chord, we have a fifth fret on the D and then fifth fret on the A. And now come up. And that's everybody's favorite power chord again, just E5. So that whole chunk, one more time for luck, would be three and four and. Now we have almost a riff, which cycles around a few times just before the distorted solo comes in. Um, general idea is a... All right, so you start off with that power chord, uh, the A, D and G strings, and then go to a first finger bar at the seventh fret. This is the uh, D, G and B this time, so... And back to uh, all of the power chord except for the A string. And then just play that one a little more quietly. Um, so the whole thing loops around what, three times and then there's a fill. So. All right, suppose we should deal with that fill. Um, Sliding back up here, this should feel like familiar territory, it's the 12th fret blues box again. So you slide up to the 14th fret on the A string, and uh, then you're basically playing a 12th fret on the D, 14th fret on the D, but you can smudge your fingertips down so that you're catching the G string as well. And then re-pick the 14th fret, bend up, pick it again, not bent, down to the 12th fret, and then end on the, the A and D strings. So, And the last note, first finger again, middle two strings. Slide off. So with a little bit of the bar leading up to that, you'd 
you'd have this. Um... And then the riff recurs a couple more times. It's slightly different now. So the main difference there is instead of Uh, the first chord in each pattern is actually this now. And that's the last we'll be hearing from the clean guitar for a while. So for the next section, fire up your nastiest overdrive. 